clearly, Anna, investors are watching this very closely. What, what are you telling your investor clients as far as how big this could get? Well, you know, Sarah, we, we've mainly been telling them not to get overly excited that this means uh, there will be a more precipitous lifting of zero COVID measures um, and not to not to embrace sort of overblown initial takes on these protests that liken them to Tiananmen Square or or even the 2019 protests in Hong Kong. And it's uh, it, it's sort of a confirmation of that that uh, Eunice reported that indeed the protests seem to be quieting down. That's pretty much what we were anticipating, although that's actually faster than we first expected. And, and to be clear, you think they will quiet down because Beijing will, will completely clamp down on them and send the police out? So we actually think that there is, there's other evidence that the central government would like to loosen the zero COVID policies. The, the trouble is exactly how to do that without ending up uh, in a situation where there's a, a super disruptive outbreak uh, because there just aren't enough people vaccinated right now for the population to be able to withstand an opening up that doesn't create a serious outbreak. Um, but, we, but we have seen signs, you know, the release of 20 measures earlier this month uh, indicating that, that crackdowns or lockdowns should be more targeted. And also Xi Jinping's appearance at the G20 where he wasn't wearing a mask and that was pretty high profile. Um, that being said, you know, we, we don't expect that there can be any immediate lifting. And uh, I guess our, our speculation about the protests is that they uh, may be allowed to continue to some extent, especially if they're focused on the COVID measures themselves. It's a little bit different matter when they're overtly political and criticizing the central government and Xi Jinping himself, as, as we've been seeing in Shanghai. Uh, and there may be pressure yeah. on local governments to further limit the, mm -hmm. um, the lockdowns. So ultimately, you do think this leads to more relaxing of policies, which is, which is, I think, the way the market is interpreting it, because some of the biggest winners in today's session are the China-linked stocks. Pinduoduo, for instance, is zooming. A lot of these, the KWeb China ETF, is actually up today in a down market. So, so Anna, my question has to do with U.S. companies that operate there, Nike, Apple, which is under pressure because of supply chain. They've been dealing with the zero COVID lockdown, rolling lockdowns. Now the protests. Do, do you think that American companies will get dragged in here, not just from a supply chain perspective, but a political one, if the protests do indeed grow? Doesn't it make it harder for them to explain being in that country? I mean, certainly it does create reputational risk, uh, as do many things with doing business in China right now uh, for U.S. companies. But uh, probably in most cases, no more so than than has been the case over the course of the COVID pandemic. Uh, I think that the greater concern is not reputational risk, even though we do have the example of, of the Foxconn uh, protests as, as a big high profile one. Uh, the bigger concern is really, you know, the disruptions to business operations.